This video will cover exactly how you can roll a natural 20 over any given open gaming license that Wizards may produce and create your own role playing system. And hopefully, you can make some money at it. The first thing to note, however, is that a perfect tabletop role-playing game system is a subjective concept, as different people have different preferences and tastes. However, there are certain elements that are generally considered important for a successful system. Clear and well-written rules. The game's mechanics and rules should be easy to understand and follow, and should be consistent throughout the game. You can't have on page 14 mechanics for uh, rolling dice uh, for damage, but then on page 172 have mechanics for using cards to determine damage. Consistent rules that are easy to follow are vital. Likewise, rules for actions need to be consistent. If you have one type of character that should excel at hiding, for example, it wouldn't make sense to have rules in place to allow them to wield a massive two-handed axe while wearing a, a clanky suit uh, of full plate armor while on horseback. That's only going to lead to a muddy situation. An interesting and engaging setting. The game's setting uh, and world should be detailed and believable and should provide players with a sense of immersion and a desire to explore and discover more. Think classic Dragonlance or, or even uh, Rokugan from Legend of Five Rings. Those settings were rich with possibilities and encouraged players to explore those lands and always provided to the Game Master a wealth of tools uh, with which to create engaging content. Even open world games like uh, video games like World of Warcraft have successfully pulled this off, encouraging players to explore the landscape and find out what could possibly be behind that next door. Flexible and open-ended gameplay. The game should uh, allow players to create unique characters and give them the freedom to make their own choices, rather than being railroaded into a specific path. This one is more on the Game Master side of things, but the mechanics will begin with the role-playing game system itself, uh, the one that you create. Adding in elements to character creation that allow for a multitude of different types of characters is always a key to a successful role-playing system. Otherwise, everyone is running around as the same type of character, and that's just kind of boring and not fun. Likewise, you want your system to have that uh, to-be-continued element, something that they can come back and, and pick up right where it left off week after week, month after month, year after year. There also needs to be a good balance of challenge and reward. The game should provide a sense of accomplishment and progress for players, but also offer a healthy degree of challenge that keeps the game interesting. This too is a great mechanic to build into your system. You'll want something in place that uh, more or less details or, or scales and, and defines things like encounters and the difficulty there. It would be silly to see a new player being able to take on uh, single-handedly a mighty foe that has an army at their disposal. If a single player can take on all of that and survive, then what? There's no challenge there, no, no balance. And while your system is likely to attract some power gamers, it may not keep bringing the masses of players back for more. A good game to player dynamic. A good game master should be able to create an engaging and fun experience for players and should be able to handle the game's rules and mechanics with ease. An overcomplication of rules makes things muddy. Uh, muddy and crunchy rules can be intimidating for new players and, and new game masters to your system. Oh, there's nothing wrong with some uh, good crunchy rules in place, but requiring someone to have an advanced degree in trigonometry just to figure out the, the arc and, and range of a bow well, that's, that's probably a bit much. A sense of community. A game that fosters a sense of community among its players can be more enjoyable and rewarding for everyone involved. Consider this. Do you want your system played by one specific group of players, or do you want as many people on the planet to be able to play it? Having it uh, cater to as large a population as possible will instantly make it accessible to anyone who wants to play it. Put it this way. If you sell 5,000 copies to only one select group at, say, 20 bucks a pop, uh, well, that's not bad. I mean, that's $100,000. But if you broaden the potential customer pool, you'll find yourself selling millions of copies at 20 bucks a pop. Two million copies sold would be $40 million. I'd rather have 40 million than 100 grand. A game that can be played with different groups of people and adaptable to different preferences and play styles, that's the key to a goal. The more people playing it, the more entrenched in the gaming world your system will become. After all, that's the point of striking out on your own, isn't it? To share your craft and system with as many people as you can and make money doing it. Thick skin. As mentioned at the top of this video, it's important to note that a perfect game for one person may not be perfect for another. You should always be prepared for a bit of criticism. That's going to be part of the territory. 
Thick skin will also be needed while you are crafting up your own role-playing game system. Obviously, these are basics when it comes to conceptualizing your own system, but there have been many fantastic creators start up their own system using the exact formula that we just detailed out. Oh, there's nothing saying that you can't come up with your own formula, but the key points mentioned here are tried and true. You don't have to exactly reinvent the wheel when making up your own system. It just has to be unique enough and fun enough at the end of the day. To sum up, the key points to creating your own role-playing system are clear and well-written rules, an interesting and engaging setting, flexible and open-ended gameplay, uh, a good balance of challenge versus reward, a good GM player dynamic, a sense of community, and thick skin. Once you have that set up and you have developed your role-playing system, then you can worry about supplemental material. Oh, don't hesitate to take notes along the way. Uh, perhaps you want to create something specific for a single character type, a, a, a guidebook uh, of sorts for that character's type's options. Uh, you may not need to include that in the main core rules, but by all means, make notes along the way. That's kind of a hidden point to creating your own system. Always leave room to add more products. This will help you keep relevant year after year after year. Don't be shy to get friends and family involved in the creation process or in the playtesting process. You'll want to develop your system into the best possible version that it can be. Otherwise, there will be folks out there that will turn away from it. In other words, don't spend one afternoon jotting down your entire system and expect to market it the next day and sell millions of copies. This adventure that you're embarking upon will be difficult and it will be hard, but the reward can be out of this world. If you ever have any questions at all or would like for me to provide any tips or just look over your material, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I've been a part of many different game development processes over the years, uh, from various CCG games to video games to, yeah, and, and role-playing games. Crafting up a new role-playing system right now, especially in light of what Wizards of the Coast is doing with the Open Gaming License, simply put, it's prime time to strike out on your own. There will be new companies emerge from this, and at its core, Game Masters is here to promote that independent creator. And I personally would love to promote your work. Stay in touch with me, email me, chat with me down in the comments, and until next Our Paths Cross, may your creative imagination run wild.